Thank you for joining us for this evening's Cumberland Family Academy workshop. Cumberland Family Academy is a Cumberland County Schools initiative. The Cumberland Family Academy is committed to enriching the lives of children by bringing parents, guardians, and schools closer together as equal partners. When families have high expectations for children and encourage them to work hard, they support and promote a child's academic, social, and emotional well-being. The purpose of the Family Academy program is to provide families with the necessary tools to support the success of their child's education. This evening, our workshop presenters are Patricia Eaton, Sean Bros, and Wanda Wesley's Wesley, our team from our CCS pre-K department. They will have the opportunity to introduce themselves before we get started. Again, thank you for joining us for a Cumberland Family Academy. Sorry, they children don't come with instructions with our pre-K team. Thank you so much and I'll turn it over to you. Good evening, everyone. We're so happy to have you join us tonight. My name is Patricia Eaton. I'm the pre-K coordinator with Cumberland County Schools. Along with us tonight is Wanda Wesley and Sean Brost. Uh, did good, you all want to say hello? Oh, hi, everybody. My name is Sean Brost. I'm the preschool, exceptional children's preschool specialist um, for Cumberland County. Good evening, everyone. I'm Wanda Wesley, and I'm with Cumberland County Schools pre-K department. And we're so happy that you joined us tonight. So our workshop starts off, sorry, they children don't come with instructions. Now, if children don't come with instructions, then how do we learn to be parents? That's the, that's the important question. Most of us will realize that we learn how to be parents by watching our parents be parents or how we were parented or how our family members parented others. So that's pretty much how we learn to be parents. We didn't get instructions. And then everyone tells us that you are your child's first and most important teacher. But the good news is there is hope. It's never too late to positively impact our children so regardless if, we, if they come with instructions or not, we have so many opportunities how to become better parents. So tonight we're talking about the philosophy and practices of nurturing parenting. The Community-Based Education and Nurturing Parenting Series is what we'll be using tonight. And we will be talking about or addressing the first first one in the series, which is the philosophy and practices of nurturing parenting. If you notice here, there are 10 different uh, workshop topics, uh, topics under this. And there are ages and stages of growth for infants and toddlers, ways to enhance positive brain development in children and teens, communicating with respect, building self-worth in children, understanding feelings understanding and developing family morals, values, and rules, praising children and their behavior, alternatives to spanking, and learning positive ways to deal with stress and anger. The Nurturing Parenting Education Workshops are a non-judgmental but proven series of lessons that empower parents and caregivers with the skills to increase positive parenting attitudes and behaviors and support a more nurturing way of life for families. It was established in 1983 by the Family Development Resources. It's offered worldwide and especially to mil military installations and the main goal to improve, improve parenting skills. Now there's another version of these workshops that you may have heard about, but they're more intensive and they're for families who may be ordered to go to parenting workshops through DSS or the court system. And our local partnership for children does offer those types of workshops. But tonight we're gonna to be delving into the community-based education of nurturing parenting and the philosophy and practices of nurturing parenting. And what this session is going to do, it's going to give you an overview of all of these other 10 topics, just enough to get you excited and interested about learning more. So we hope that you'll get a, gain a lot of information tonight. Now, our goal is to increase parents' knowledge of nurturing parenting. We can't teach what we don't know. 
Our objectives are to describe nurturing parenting principles, to help parents realize their ability to impact a child's emotional development by being a nurturing parent, and to define ways parents can become nurturing parents. And we'd like to maybe add another uh, goal or objective for tonight. We want you to know that we are resources for you. If you want additional information on any of these topics, we can either provide those for you or link you to other community resources. Nurturing parenting is a critical skill for all life forms on the planet. Example, plants. Plants are nurtured. We make sure they have the right amount of water. We make sure they get the right sunlight, that they're planted in the perfect soil. But the thing about uh, plants versus children, plants normally come with instructions. We usually get our plants and there's a little tab that tells us how to take care of them, but we don't get that with our children. So this nurturing parenting should be very helpful for us. And it's important for all of us to treat others and ourselves with respect, compassion, caring, and dignity. Now, when nurturing is not present, it is easy to see how human beings can be cruel, abusive, and neglecting. Now let's think about nurturing. What do we mean by nurturing? Let's see, sorry about that. Nurturing comes from the Latin word nutri tri tura, and that means to nurse, to nourish, and to promote growth. But nurturing is more than just giving your child food or shelter or clothing. It is also about building healthy and strong emotional relationships or attachment between you and your children. Now you look at this picture here with the father and son, they look like there's a lot of nurturing going on or touching and smiling. But sometimes it's difficult for parents to be nurturing naturally because they weren't nurtured as children. So it's sometimes a little more difficult for that. It doesn't just come naturally. So that's what we're encouraging parents to make it um, intentional to learn about nurturing. Nurturing means being the person your child can count on when, even when they're unlovable. Because when they're unlovable, they're throwing tantrums, they're not doing what you told them to do, they're acting out in school, that's when they, they usually need the most nurturing. So just being nurturing can make a big difference in a child's life. Now, nurturing parenting emphasizes raising children in a warm and caring and trusting home. And it's the importance of helping children to be respectful and cooperative and caring. Children who are cared for are treated respectfully and treat themselves, others, and the environment in the same manner. And we've seen that word several times and we've just started the presentation, respectfully, respectful. It's so important and nurturing parenting is founded on that belief. It's almost like children are watching us and they're also more likely to do what they see us do. So to nurture them, they're always watching how we treat others and they're how we care for our surroundings. And when we nurture them, we're setting the, 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 the model for them to do the same. And we're respecting our children regardless of how they're behaving. Now we talk more about the fundamentals or the primary uh, principles of nurturing parenting. We're gonna go over feelings of attachment, empathy, nurturing oneself, discipline, expressing feelings, expectations and self-worth and gentle touch. I will share some of the information. I'm gonna start talking to you a little bit about the first two, which are the feelings of attachment and empathy. And then our Sean will take over from there to go to delve deeper into the other areas. Let's start with attachment. Attachment or attached parents convey a deep love to their children that is unconditional. They express joy being with their children. They create a safe home for the children to explore and they promote a sense of safety and security. And the key word here, I think uh, the key expression is that unconditional love. It means it's not subject to any other thing. Oh, I'm going to love you and I'm going to nurture you if you clean up your room. Or I'm going to love you and I'm going to nurture you if you do well in school, if you get all A's. Oh, I'm going to love you and nurture you if you do what I tell you. No, that unconditional love means I'm going to love you and nurture you because I'm your parent and you're you. 
So that's so important to instill in our in our children that sense of being unconditionally loved and nurtured. Feelings of attachment also deals with focusing on how parents really listen to the thoughts and feelings of the children. Respectfully listen. Listen where you're giving them your undivided attention, your eye contact, and they know what they're saying or the feelings that they're trying to express are being valued. You use praise to promote cooperation and you have fun as a family. That's all about the feelings of attachment. The next principle is empathy. Parental empathy is the ability to recognize children's emotions and understand the motive of their behavior. Now, empathy comes from the Greek word empathia, and that means to be aware of and responding, again, respectfully to the feelings and thoughts of others. Also, you wanna put yourself in your child's place. And remember, sometimes we have to reflect on how it was when we were younger. It may seem like it's a long time ago, but sometimes we just need to remember how it was and how we felt in different situations. How, how did we feel when this happened? How did you feel as a child when this happened to you? And the motivation behind that behavior. I know when I was younger, I used to cry a lot when my mom would leave to go out with her friends. And the motivation behind my behavior is I felt like I, I didn't want her to leave. I, I loved her and I wanted her to be around me all the time. And I knew if I did that, she would stay. But as I got older, I realized that you know, there were other ways to, to deal with that. But we have to try to get on our children's level and see where they're coming from with their uh, expressions of emotions and how they're feeling. Research clearly shows that children whose parents have empathy they do better in school, they're socially well-adjusted, and are more emotionally stable. So empathy sets students up to deepen their relationships with their classmates and their teachers. It encourages tolerance and acceptance of others. And all those things makes the school environment one that's more pleasing and comfortable for different folks and all types of people. So studies show that around two years of age, some children also, they start to show genuine empathy at such a long, young age. So it's so important for us to realize that uh, empathy can help our children do better in school. Empathy teaches parents and children to care for themselves, others, and their environment. It also helps you avoid the dangers of drugs, alcohol, and other self-injurious activities. So these are the first two principles of the nurturing parenting, and I'm gonna turn it over to Sean, and he'll talk to you about some of the other ones. Good evening again, everybody. Um, the next principle that we'll talk about is nurturing oneself. Uh, as the slide reads, parents who take time each day getting their own needs met are more capable of understanding are more capable of understanding and helping children get their needs met. So when I was preparing for this, I had an analogy pop into my brain almost immediately, and it's that of being on an airplane and when before the the pre takeoff procedure with the, the um, flight attendants talk about is when the oxygen mask drops, put it on yourself before helping the person next to you, your child or, or somebody else in the seat. Um, and that's, as a parent, that's counterintuitive, but for, at least for myself, um, but the, the notion is that if I don't help myself first by putting that mask on, I in turn won't be able to help out my son right next to me get his mask on. Um, and if I work with him first, I have the chance to maybe fall out because of lack of oxygen. So it is counterintuitive, but you have to take care of yourself before you can take care of others. So these nurturing uh, lessons, they do focus on helping parents recognize the basic needs of adults and children, understand the import, understanding the importance of meeting basic needs and helping children make good choices to enhance their own personal self-worth. Um, and we can go to the next one there. 
The next area that I'd like to talk about is discipline. Um, some critical aspects of nurturing parenting, including setting limits through family rules, teaching right from wrong through family morals, and teaching respect and self-work through family values. And I think Ms. Wanda talked about this um, perfectly a little bit earlier, that um, you have to model as an adult that appropriate behavior for your child. And a child doesn't necessarily know what's appropriate and inappropriate, um, but as an adult, we do. And the, the behaviors that we show and demonstrate for our children will be soaked up and they will in turn follow through with those um, behaviors and morals that you and values that you instill into them. Okay, and discipline cannot be imposed, beaten into, or forced on the children. And discipline develops best by children uh, modeling parents whose example they admire. Uh, admire. So, as you know, as I had just said, um, a child is a sponge, and they will soak up not only knowledge, reading, writing, math, uh, but they'll also soak up values. Um, and uh, you know how you tr how you treat other people as adults, they're going to learn, um, and they're going to learn right or wrong. So it's important that we instill proper morals and values into our children. Um, and um, we we do look at the term discipline sometimes as kind of beating it in, um, and it's that's just not how it works. Um, so, and getting into this next slide here, the lessons help parents learn some alternatives to that hitting, spanking, and yelling, and then positive nurturing disciplinary strategies and techniques. So I think that goes along with what I was just um, saying, um, you know, the teaching those positives. So um, the next uh, example here is um, expressing feelings and emotional competence is the ability to identify and appropriately express personal feelings and recognize and appropriately respond to the feelings of others. And you see that picture there. I think it illustrates perfectly um, the man and the and the boy. They're they're happy. They're smiling. They're clearly engaged in some activity that's on the other side of the camera, whether they're posing or there's something going on back there. Those two are clearly in sync and, and in tune with each other. Um, and uh, that's that emotional connection that we're talking about here. So nurturing lessons also teach parents and children the difference between feelings of comfort and discomfort, healthy ways to express emotional energy, and ways to manage and reduce feelings of stress and anger. And this picture here, this little guy is doing one of my personal least favorite activities, and that's shooting hoops. But that might be a healthy way for that person to express their emotional energy. In my personal um, ways are, you know, I like to play hockey, I like to watch sports, and I actually like to sit and joke around with folks, which I was doing um, in the 25 minute or so uh, prepping for this meeting tonight. I was joking with the co-host because that's a way that that's a healthy way for me to express my emotional energy. Those are just some examples. Um, and, uh, you know, you whatever your outlet is, like I had said originally, and the first part, um, you know, you need to find that outlet that's healthy for you. So the, the next principle is expectations and self-worth. Um, children's overall feelings of worth are lowered when parents make demands on children that they are unable to meet and they have no expectations. Let me read that slide to you again in adult terms. Workers' overall feelings of worth are lowered when their bosses make demands on the workers that they are unable to meet and they have no expectations. That does not sound like a fun working environment to me, and it doesn't sound like a fun um, emotional environment for a child either. So we put demands on ourselves and we put demands on our children. We put demands on people around us um, and those demands must be reasonable. Um, they must be attainable. Um, and we have to have high expectations, not only for our children, but for our coworkers, our community members. And we have to have high expectations for ourselves. Um, and the nurturing lessons, they also um, help parents learn the appropriate stages of development. 
ways to build self-worth in children and under and the importance of understanding neurological development in children. Well, I think Miss Wanda um, scheduled the different presenters. She put me into this slide because talking I'm with the special education exceptional children's program. So I have a vast uh, knowledge and my department does of developmental stages in children and um, understanding the neurological development in children. Um, but it's important that everybody knows kind of the basics around that. So um, a good example I have is uh, you have a six-year-old at the house uh, and you have your six-year-old and throw down the folder. This is my 2020 tax folder. And we say, get to work, son. It's time to work on the taxes. Do Here's all the W-2s. Here's all the bank statements. Um, let's see how quickly we can get all this itemized. Um, is that appropriate for a six-year-old? No, it's not. Um, it's, it's clearly not. But what is appropriate for a six-year-old might be high-level kindergarten, first-grade work. Um, we also need to definitely understand that, that each child, even though you might be six years old, or we like to speak in early childhood in terms of months, so that would be like a 72-month child, uh, but what is their actual developmental level? Are they at 72 months? Are they above 72 months? Would they be considered a child with developmental delays? Um, I'm possibly looking at uh, 24 months or two years of age, 18 months or a year and a half. Are those expectations that we're presenting to that 72 month child, are the expectations for their chronological age, or their, their actual age, or their developmental age. And we need to, as parents, remember that each child is different. And if we have a child with um, atypical neurological development, we have to not, I don't wanna say lower, I never say lower expectations. I, I hesitate to say raise expectations. Um, I, I just like to speak in lofty goals. Um, but we don't lower our expectations. We adjust our expectations to meet the need of that child. And like I, I could go on for like three hours on that one slide, but we'll move on to the next slide talking about um, gentle touch. And the picture shows that I don't think there's any explanation needed for gentle touch. Um, the use of gentle touch contributes to positive brain development the ability to form trusting relationships throughout life and a healthy perception of body image. And if we go to the next one there, nurturing lessons also teach parents positive impact of gentle touch on children's overall development and the ways to enhance parent-child relationships. Now, I'm never gonna equate raising a child to raising a dog, but a a really solid example. I know there's many dog lovers out there, folks that go to the um, to the rescue shelters and take up fostering foster animals. Um, and an example would be if you sit down with a dog and you raise your hand, um, there's going to be a dog that comes and sits on your lap because he knows that if the hand is raised. We're gonna start petting the dog, that gentle touch. And there are unfortunately some dogs where you sit down and an adult raises their hand and they're going to cower and back away in fear. And that's a learned behavior because they have been um, you know, swatted and abused. And it's the same thing, so the same principle with a child that um, children learn um, through gentle touches or not so gentle touches. So take that time and hug your child. Take that time, put your arm around that child, uh, make them feel comfortable, enhance that relationship in a positive manner. Um, we have a scale here for rating um, your nurturing parenting skills. And you can do this informally right now. Um, or in the full workshop, there's a hand that you can fill out a handout, but we're looking at those areas, attachment, empathy, nurturing oneself, gentle touch, discipline, expressing feelings and expectations. You can rate yourself. Um, do you need a lot of improvement in that area? Some improvement? Your skills are rated as okay. 
um, good or really good in this area, uh, one through five. And um, take a look at that and, and think about that. And, you know, if you rate yourself high, why are you rating yourself so high? And then give those examples inside of you. Um, if you rate yourself a little bit behind or there's a weakness, it's not necessarily a negative. That's an opportunity for growth and development for yourself. It's an opportunity to change and an opportunity to um, think. So not it's not a negative thing to rate yourself low. Um, if I, for instance, um, I have a tough time expressing feelings, I might need a lot of improvement. I, I don't look at that and say, well, that's kind of bad for Sean, I look at that and say, okay, what can I do to work on? What can I do to build that area? I'm really, really good with nurturing myself. I can, you know, I, I watch a lot of sports. Um, I tell a lot of jokes. I, I laugh at myself all the time. I'm really good at that. Not so good with expressing feelings though. So how can I improve that expressing feelings? Um, think about this as a positive if you rate yourself low in one of these areas. Um, and only you can rate yourself. I can't rate you, you have to rate yourself. So with that, I'd like to turn things over to the next part of uh, the presentation to Ms. Patricia Eaton. Thank you, Sean, I loved it. Nurturing as a lifestyle is our next section and I love the word lifestyle because it's just a way of living, a way of making sure this is not a one-time event when we're nurturing, that it's something that comes naturally to you. You don't even have to work at it if it's instilled in your, in your very being. So nurturing is just the ability to care, to promote or encourage the growth and development of all those positive traits you heard them talk about previously, respect, caring, um, and the qualities and characteristics that we want our children to have and to grow up with to be strong individuals and children who grow into adults who know how to take care of themselves and take care of others. So to nurture is to treat yourself with caring, with kindness and respect, and not just treat yourself with those, but make sure others treat you like that. To keep ourselves physically and emotionally healthy that exercising, going to, you know, shooting the hoops and making sure we do something like meditation, prayer, whatever it is to keep your emotional side healthy, to make good choices and to be your own best friend. So here's the question, why don't we nurture ourselves? Because a lot of us don't. Well, part of that reason is because within everyone is the potential to care or not to care, to be a nurturer or to hurt. And all of that comes from your past experiences. Uh, when Sean gave the example of the dog, the past experience of the one who, when you raise your hand, cowered at the corner, he had bad experiences. The one who got petted had positive experiences, nurturing care. So inside each of us, there are four distinct traits of our personality that define the way that we're able or capable to treat ourselves and others. The first one is the nurturer. That's the part of our personality that is capable of giving care. Uh, we're concerned, we're compassionate, we're loving. Uh, this is the person that does all, feeds you, um, uh, disciplines you in a positive manner. And that caregiver uh, that we are with our children is our nurturer. The second one is the nurtured. That's the part of our personality that loves to receive that care, that we seek that closeness and, and um, attachment with other people. We love praise. We like positive touch. We like to be around people who are positive and nurturing. The third aspect is the part of our personality that can be really cruel and abusive to, to yourself and to others. Um, when we don't respect ourselves, we're being, we're being disrespectful. And so that's kind of an aspect of cruelty, capable of hurting others and disregarding the respect of other living things and objects. Ms. Wanda told us about the plant, how you nurture it because you put good soil and you water and feed it. The predator, the 
the, the predator doesn't do that. The predator does everything to not help you grow and be healthy. And then sadly, the last one is the part of our personality that believes that they deserve that pain and hurt they're getting. They've gotten it for so long, they think that's how everybody is treated. And so they feel like they're being taught that that's the right way to be raised and that what the person is doing, even though it's painful, is good for them. I love this because this gives us an example of the, if you look at the first, the top row, nurturing parenting from never to all the time, a, a parent who nurtures their children all the time, go right underneath all the time where it says never zero for hurting parenting. If you're nurturing, you can't be hurting. So if I am a nurturing parent and that's a lifestyle for me, I will not be able to do some of those things that are hurtful to a child, the way I speak to them, hitting, shoving, whatever it may be. But the sad part is the opposite is also true. If I'm a parent who's, who my past experiences experiences brought me to a place where I'm a hurting parent, then it's going to be difficult for me to nurture. It's going to have to be something that I realize and I'm intentional about so I can help grow from a hurting parent to a nurturing parent. So why do we need to be nurturing? Well, Children would develop a very nurtured part of their personality if we nurtured them. And they would become nurturers too, which is what we want. If you practice hurting, if your hurting parenting is practiced, then your child is gonna develop that big victim part of their personality. They're gonna think that they deserve that and that that's the way everybody gets treated. And so they're going to come to believe that it's just, hey, that's just, that's a lifestyle for them then. Life, life as a victim, though, leads to even worse things because it causes one to go next to being a predator. And being a predator, we talked about earlier, is when you're cruel and you hurt people, whether it's by hitting or verbal or emotional. And that becomes a lifestyle from you. But that again comes from the experiences you had as a victim, those prior negative experiences that were not good. So we asked a while back, why don't we nurture ourselves? Well, sometimes we can't nurture ourselves because we don't think we deserve it. We don't think we need that respect. We're not entitled to it. Our past experiences have told us that we're not worthy. And so we have to get past that so we can nurture ourselves. So why is it important? Well, again, Sean hit it right on the head with the airplane illustration. If you can't nurture yourself, you can't nurture anybody else. I am only capable of giving what I have to give. And if I haven't nurtured myself, if I haven't taken care of myself, I can't take care of somebody else. So we really need to take time each and every day, as selfish as that may seem to some of you, but we need to take time to do those things that nurture us. And again, it doesn't matter what it is, if it's taking a walk or just sitting in a quiet room for five minutes, take that time to nurture yourself so that you can nurture others. One of the things before I read this to you that I do want to make sure that we share with you, please nurture your children. If you do not nurture your children, someone else will. And that someone else may be someone who doesn't care about them, who doesn't love them, who wants to use them. And they will tell the, the child or the, the teenager everything they wanna hear so that they stop listening to you and start listening to them. So let's make it a commitment. Let's make it intentional to, know, to take care of ourselves, nurture ourselves and nurture our children because they're the kind of people that we want to see in the future.
caring, loving, respectful. This is a beautiful poem. I gave birth to you, but you didn't come with instructions. I know that I made mistakes along the way, and for those, I am sorry. I pray that you understand that they came from me not knowing and not from a lack of love. From the moment you were born, my heart was yours. I looked in your eyes and I saw all my hopes and dreams come alive in you. I love you more than you will ever know. For now, for always. Sean? Well, that is our presentation. Uh,